I'm Dr. Faith Elliott Rossing, and I'm here today with members of the Economic Development Incentive Fund Commission. I'm here with the Chair Dieter Scherer, Vice Chair Majette Parker, and members Ann McKenna Welch and Mike Whitehill. And we're going to have a little bit of a dialogue about the last uh, round of applications and then plans for the upcoming uh, round of applications. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome the members of the Economic Development Commission Incentive Fund to uh, the show this morning. We've completed round one of applications and um, I guess let's just throw it out there. What were your impressions of the applications we received the first round? I know and we had talked. We were only expecting maybe two or three and then when we got 17 we were pleased. Very pleased, especially for the first round and the applications were a diverse group of uh, businesses. It was very exciting. Mm -hmm. Exciting, be partly because they were diverse in the amount uh, of requested funds as well, mm -hmm. from very, very small projects to, uh, to some very significant uh, uh, economic development projects. Along those same lines, um, talk a little bit about the depth of the applications. Were you surprised at the request, not only just the amount, but the, the intent and the number of jobs that were going to be created? Yeah, I mean, Power Electronics was very uh, impressive in terms of their potential job growth in within the county, and they're also their current um, employees that they have. They've done a lot to continue growing, and they expressed that within their application, which helped us really narrow in to exactly what they were asking for and the end results that we could expect from that project. So, um, being really specific and giving us a full description of the project really helped us. That was also a unique project too in, in some ways because it was a project that had gone through the county uh, uh, development review process mm -hmm. and it was actually construction underway. Mm -hmm. So when we received the application, um, the, uh, the, the process had moved along and we weren't uh, asked to cover um, any costs that would normally not be uh, uh, fungible from our, from our fund. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, was, uh, it was a complete application, uh, but one that was also um, moving on multiple levels. I think when we look at it globally, we we're very impressed by the number of jobs that were going to be created. Absolutely. Extremely, extremely well written and, and <laughs> we're actually <coughs> that occur now. I was a bit surprised that it was uh, countywide. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one would think that, uh, that your center of population would be where most of the applications came from, and, mm -hmm. and that's not true. And that was actually a delight because I think uh, it shows that the that the fund or the meaning of the fund can apply to everybody across the county and every in every <laughs> district and in, in uh, uh, rural and more developed areas as well. Right. It was we had uh, a couple of applications from agricultural mm -hmm. businesses, mm -hmm. exactly. um, medical, manufacturing. Right. It really was um, across the board. And the presentations, in addition to, um, yeah, they were. Um, very forthright in their business. You mm -hmm. can see that they had plans and that they were excited um, to go forward with their new projects. Yep. <laughs> and some of the businesses were, they were already moving forward in these projects and they had been making calls and, and finding their potential, uh, ses or their potential prospects for these um, various endeavors and it allowed us to see, okay, there's a viable market for this mm -hmm. and we just need to help them make that first move, get us help them get through that first step and give them the nudge that they needed right. and that's what we're here for you know we're here to really help people get out the door with new projects new exciting things in the county and as we were talking about earlier it was everything from manufacturing right. to tech to medical tech um, to agricultural yeah mm -hmm. it, the, and the salaries were oh yeah the salaries very responsible. were very yeah. good mm -hmm. I mean they were high in, especially in the manufacturing, the employees that they had were long term. They mm -hmm. had, um, they were well benefited and mm -hmm. well salaried. I was real impressed with the, you know, with they track that type of employment and they mm -hmm. kept that type mm -hmm. of employment. I, know, I, just, uh, go ahead. I was going to say a key element I was really impressed with too. Many of them, if it were not for these funds that we provided, but for the funds, mm -hmm. they would not be able to as, as aggressively mm -hmm. pursue employment. You know, adding employees to their right. employment role. Mm -hmm. So, but for the, our funds. Right. They would not have been able to do that. The interesting follow-up on that is mm -hmm. that the uh, that the employment opportunities, mm -hmm. because we publicized uh, uh, the results of our of our uh, uh, grants and loans, mm -hmm. uh, and we got it out on public television through through our our, our television and other outreach, made available uh, or accessible the uh, the 
the coming of these jobs to yes. folks that might want to take them from our high schools and uh, uh, other training programs in the colleges mm -hmm. in the community college and whatnot to uh, encourage them to stay home right take a job mm -hmm. uh, that's right. uh, that's opening as a result of something that Queen Anne's County uh, commissioners uh, have opened the door for mm -hmm. and not only just openings for them but they can provide long-term right career opportunities for them too as well so I want to encourage people in the future just to continue to look at that right. as a way to build up our employment base not just starting employment but those that are long-term careers mm -hmm. you bet one of the things that surprised me too is that we already had established businesses uh, being most of our applications and you know that's fantastic because they want to further grow their businesses but I actually expected more startups and more yes. entrepreneurs to be requesting smaller amounts of funds just that's to see the viability. Young. I am young. <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur so I'm like where where's everybody else like right. me? Right. Listen round two is coming up. <laughs> right, right. As a result no I'm, I was surprised as well. Yeah. Really. Yes. As a result of the first round of applications you've collectively made some decisions on how you would like to see the program move forward to clarify it and enhance it. And Dieter, you just jumped in and said, you know, where are all the entrepreneurs, where mm -hmm. are the startups? So that's a really good initiative. There are some other things, though, um, and you mentioned before the but for language. Is there anything else you want to add specifically about that? Because the, the program does have the but for requirement of essentially but for these funds, the program or the initiative will not move forward or it will move forward more slowly. And I think in round one, what we saw was it will move forward more slowly. I think we saw that it would move forward um, more slowly, but it also showed um, the enhanced quality the products could have if mm -hmm. they had these funds. So I, we saw that in the seed yeah. sorting, yeah. and we saw that in the uh, manufacturing of the drums. And it was, um, so it, it's an overall benefit to the business for this, but um, often it was something that they dreamt of in the future, and mm -hmm. this um, actually allowed them to go um, to it, provide these enhancements to their business to add a more quality product. Right. And a little more aggressive startup too. Really, mm -hmm. and I think that's uh, that was sort of one of the things that we saw where where you take an aggressive, or uh, if you have the availability, the funds, then your startup or your your addition to your business can be more aggressive from the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and give you a little more uh, uh, you know potency at the jump start. And I think that's that was very helpful. In a couple of the of the grants that we awarded. Mm -hmm. In the first round of applications, um, there was also requesting for funding of positions. That was not something that you. Uh, took lightly in, in considering those requests and essentially you, you opted collectively agreed not to to fund positions. Does anybody want to clarify sure. your stance I, I on that? Sure, I can start on that. Uh, the, uh, our, our thinking on that evolved uh, as we, as we mm -hmm. reviewed a series of the applications uh, and, uh, and in equity in the, in the manner in which we were uh, considering the individual applications and the amounts that they were applying for. We figured that if the business was going was uh, was viable and was presented in a viable, uh, economically responsible way, that that the positions would fund themselves if we if we did what we could on our side to get the infra to help them with the infrastructure and to help them with uh, concept and to help them uh, in in uh, uh, working through their their uh, business plan and so on. The, uh, so rather than fund individual positions, we were funding the opportunity for them to make those positions available. Right. Mm -hmm. It would allow us to have concrete results much more quickly because they already had employees in place that could operate these, but they didn't have the funds available to perhaps buy the uh, machinery to start mm -hmm. making demo products for their clients. And so much of the time when, when you are a client of a company, you want to see what am I going to buy? It's, mm -hmm. it's hard to just imagine it uh, without actually being able to look at it, especially in manufacturing, right. something like right. that. You want to see the end right. product and you want to know how is it going to look in my business? How can I plug that in there? And if you're only funding employees, you don't get that mm -hmm. instant uh, sort of example, that validation. And we wanted to avoid that. So that's one of the reasons why we wanted to focus on more infrastructure and funding the business itself. Centerville Manufacturing was a perfect example of that Absolutely. because they, uh, when they acquired the uh, under under the funding, they acquired the equipment to manufacture the tanks. The uh, manufacturer provided training so mm -hmm. that they were able to turn out uh, tanks almost immediately. Yeah. 
uh, from the day the, in the instrument was, was, uh, was bolted to the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had their training uh, 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 folks from the manufacturer actually come in and advance that staff. So mm -hmm. this is the example where the infrastructure uh, made available or accessible more uh, opportunities for the folks that were currently working there. If they moved them over to make them in a permanent tank, tank manufacturing team, mm -hmm. that would open up future job opportunities and other aspects of their business. And I think one other key element why we frowned upon actually funding a position, a person, sustainability. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, you bring a person on board, and if we were to provide those funds, would it be sustainable? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, and we saw that there, that would be a repeat coming back again and again and again. So we did, we look at it from a sustainability right. viewpoint too. Mm -hmm. sure. we, we really wanted to see things happen that would be sustainable, like the infrastructure you're saying, right. like the, ten, the tank manufacturing equipment, mm -hmm. that's sustainable mm -hmm. right. going forward. Right. I think one of the other things that we talked about, and you made those requirements for the awards that were given, was there was, the monies are not to be used for government to government funding. Absolutely. No. Right. Um, if you are one of those projects that's submitted and you need to go through a planning and zoning process, then all your fees, your permits, your bonds, your sureties need to be paid for before you receive any monies from the county. And that's absolutely essential mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of reasons. One is is that the funds, uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, funds that were actually asked for uh, to be covered, uh, uh, fees and whatnot, uh, are enterprise funds in the county. So they're mm -hmm. self-sustaining. They're not just sort of uh, dropped into the general fund. We don't want to get involved and don't need to be involved in, in that sort of mm -hmm. uh, in that sort of process. The other thing is is that there's a we we felt like there was a matter of equity mm -hmm. uh, where uh, everybody is somebody is slamming it down through the process and nobody believes this process is easy and nobody out there is going to say it's cheap mm -hmm. to run through a development review process. I certainly know that from 40 years of experience. And so uh, uh, to to uh, take an application and and push them ahead in the line somehow or other through uh, paying public fees and public required uh, uh, allocation costs and whatnot uh, seemed uh, uh, c kind of unfair to us and, and, uh, and un un unnecessary. One of the, uh, the other things that we really need you to address, because we are getting ready to come up for round two of applications, yes. and I'm sure the public will be glad to hear that, was the completeness of the applications. Oh boy. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we asked for the information for a reason. And uh, it's your fiduciary responsibility with mm -hmm. the distribution of these monies, and it's not it's something that money. you take lightly. Mm -hmm. So, does anybody want to speak to the, the the application? It will be revised, and it may be a little more strenuous than it was the last cycle because it will incorporate some of the things that we've right. talked about. But um, does anybody want to speak to that? Uh, I think that there was probably some sensitivity in the businesses that didn't provide a complete application to, to not provide the financial data. That information is is just utmost, ne utmost necessary for us mm -hmm. to go ahead and go forward and make these decisions. But I think what might be helpful to the applicant is to know that the information is, is given to the staff and that we're, um, you know, we're just given highlights of it. We don't retain the information. We don't have it prior to um, the meeting. Um, and all the information is, is given back. The applications are given back. We leave the meetings without this um, data and, and we have a comp confidentiality understanding as a board, um, but also that the, um, the real sensitive financial data is um, provided and kept with the staff and we're just mm -hmm. given assurances right. mm -hmm. that they've met their tax requirements and things and that yeah. is a viable business. Yeah. Isn't it? Oh, go ahead. They'll perform the due diligence for us. They'll mm -hmm. make sure that you know, all the fine print is met with all of the applications that um, people are a legitimate business that yes. that they have sustainable profits now that they're not going to take this and it's go not going to you know mm -hmm. be a waste of money uh, we want to right. have it be an, a smart investment not a speculative investment for the taxpayers of the county and we need that financial data so that we can verify that mm -hmm. and we can say with a straight face yes we've done our homework to ensure that the public's money are being spent in a responsible manner. Another and, and this is Go probably ahead. where we differ from some governmental entities, particularly at the federal level, mm -hmm. where after they've made tremendous amount of, of investment mm -hmm. in some businesses, those businesses later on file bankruptcy mm -hmm. and go out of business. Well, we're trying to avoid that here in Queen Anne County. Mm -hmm. That's why that data is so very important. Mm -hmm. And it's kept confidential. And I think that's the main thing that the viewers out there need to know, that 
It really is for the protection of all of our taxpayers and all the residents mm -hmm. in Queen Anne County that this level of detail is needed. Well, there's another aspect to it, too, and this is uh, the part that actually uh, intrigues me. If you're applying for a grant from Queen Anne's County um, and you're not a big business, and you're not an accomplished businessman, and you have a really cool idea you want to pop out there and see how it flies. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times you're not uh, fully aware of all of the uh, business requirements that may come in. So to work with the SCORE executives, to work with the county, to build your business plan, to perfect it mm -hmm. as much as you can. And if you fail the first time, come back again yes. with a perfected plan. Absolutely. You're going to learn more about uh, perhaps how to build your business and how to run your business and how to start your business by running through this process. It's kind of like training wheels. Uh, we don't object at all as a, as a group to, to you guys out there who have a really cool idea and want to advance it, either from agriculture or from anywhere, any source, mm -hmm. to be able to, to come through this process and is an accomplishment in and of itself. And, and you can take great pride, even if you don't get the grant, that you've actually uh, perfected your business and you've maybe given yourself a better chance the next time around. Maybe not even with, uh, with this county fund, but perhaps with other grant, uh, grant agencies and, and funding sources, mm -hmm. even your bank. So don't look at it as an ordeal and, and uh, throw as much information in there as you possibly yeah. can and give us that kind of help. The, mm -hmm. the application process is, I mean, there is it's, detailed information on the financial side that you should have for your businesses anyway, anyway. Yeah. Um, but the application process itself is pretty um, uh, direct and I it thought is. that the it responses is. Yeah. and the, um, really you know, they really did understand what it was that we were asking for because mm -hmm. they showed a lot of creativity and mm -hmm. what it was that they were trying to do in their own businesses. How, how important do you think um, the interview process was? And I say that because we mm -hmm. received applications and then you narrowed it down to 10, you interviewed 10, and you right. were awarded essentially eight. Uh, but the interview process is really not a component that is required with a revolving right. loan fund or some other processes that people may be involved in if they're looking for you know, support. What do you think about the interview process? I was great. I loved I, it. I, yeah. I did too. I you thought the, the most yeah. there. And I think when you're when you're looking in somebody's eyes, you actually got them across the table. Uh, some came in a little fearful. Some came in a little resentful. Mm -hmm. Some came in a little leery. They had, we had, everyone came in with their own little uh, uh, sort of uh, you know personal things. I think they probably found us to be a pretty easy group to get along with. We're very sort of amiable, and mm -hmm. uh, we say and and yeah. not uh, we're not very particularly invasive. And the, and the interview process allowed us to get a better feel for the confidence that the applicant had in his own application. I think it, you can't really read that sometimes. Mm -hmm. you, right. Do you guys share that feeling? Yeah, especially when um, the Centerville manufacturing, because it was employee driven. It wasn't mm -hmm. the owner that came in. It was yeah. employees with an idea. Right. And if we could do this, then we And it was like really impressive. I, I think at the end of the day, I think the people that came in and interviewed with us left with a greater sense of who we are and what this commission right. is all about. Mm -hmm. And I think they saw the diversity we have on this board. They saw the diversity not only in age and gender and, and race, but, in, uh, it, but we all have one thing in common, and that's to see the success of Queen Anne County businesses. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what they left mm -hmm. with, yep. that, that strong feeling that we were really fair and that, and that we looked out for what their businesses' interests are. And the other side of it was, and I, and I think they were probably surprised, I hope they were, pleasantly surprised that uh, that we kind of look at the economic development as a Queen Anne's County thing, not as a global yes. thing. Mm -hmm. If your global economy is trashed, mm -hmm. uh, why do we have to feel that our county economy is trashed? You mm -hmm. know, why can't we why can't we build from within and and uh, and and these smaller applications and even the large ones uh, uh, that we had were in a down economy. Exactly, yeah. and Absolutely. I think that kind of gave us a sense of there's a little hope out there, and yes. uh, and what I personally hope, uh, and I'm I know all my. Uh, fellow commissioners do as well, is that uh, that we see more applications. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see 40 and 50 applications. Absolutely. Through, you know, and uh, it'd be fun. And it was wonderful to hear everyone's vision for what their uh, company could be, you know, the, the social change or the economic change that they could bring to the county. And not everyone's a wordsmith. They can't, not everyone can express that <laughs> in the application. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing I do want to mention, please type your applications. Right. It will, <laughs> will make it uh, much easier for us to read through them. But um, the interview process was fantastic was in fun. that respect yeah. because uh, we formative. saw both the uh, charisma of our business owners and um, they, they could give us a full-fledged explanation for everything. We often learn things that we didn't expect to learn right. about the various 
companies within our county, and it was a uh, both a learning experience and just a, a, a fun yeah. time for us. Like, as yeah, you can and see, you can, you can see going. the passion in, in some yes. of these. And, and, and yeah. you can't read passion in an application, no, no matter how uh, how broad it is. And But seeing the in, the enthusiasm and the passion in right. the applicants, I think, helped us a little bit mm -hmm. become a little, humanize the process and, mm -hmm. and, and make us uh, uh, less invasive, I think. Well, I want to thank you all for being here with me today. We're going to use this, obviously, as outreach for round two. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, any other wise words of wisdom? Applications are coming in, uh, was it February? February. Uh, will be the deadline for the applications. I encourage you to get started now and work with county staff. Uh, if at first you don't succeed, keep kicking in there and, um, and we hope to see you uh, in front of us in the upcoming year. Absolutely, and one of the, don't think because you're small, because you're starting yeah. out, that you can't apply for like a 10,000 or 15,000 or 5,000 dollar grant or a loan. We will absolutely look at the full gamut of the size of different companies. And we just want to be here to help the county um, identify those people that have great ideas that can bring a lot of growth and economic opportunities to our county. So we're relying on you to come in and send your <laughs> application to us so that we can help you succeed because we really want to. Well said. It was. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here today. Thank you, Faith. Thank, Thank you, Faith. Faith.